Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about authorization. So we may be at a particular point in our application where we don't just want any old user to be able to go to the various sections of our application. We need to be able to identify who that user is and then based upon whether or not they've logged in successfully then grant them access to those areas of our application. So we've set up one part of this, and that is that the user can go to the login screen and authenticate themselves. So they have that username and that password all set up. And now that we know who they are, we can start to add this padlocking. We can start to check to see, is that person someone who is authenticated? And that process of checking to see if they're authenticated is called authorization where we're locking up separate sections or individual sections of our application so that only users who are authenticated have the authorization to go to that area. So let's go ahead and hop into our Visual Studio Code window and let's add some authorization to our application. So here in my code window, I've opened up the member home controller. And let's say that we really only want users who have logged in or members to be able to actually access this member home section. So how do we do that? Well, let's for right now, I'm just gonna run this real quick and start without debugging to show you that once again, anybody really can get into this member home section. So I'm just gonna navigate to member home and we can see this is a members only section. And in fact, just to reemphasize the point, I'm gonna show you that I'm just gonna clear out my cookies and everything so I'm going to clear out my browsing history so that that login that I used in the previous demo, we know that it's out. It's no longer in our browser, so it doesn't remember it. And I'm just going to reload this again. Again, I'm starting without debugging on, and I'm going to show you why in just a moment. But if I go to this member home section, and I'm definitely not logged in, we can see this is a members only section. And that's not the behavior that we want. We want to somehow make sure that the user is in fact log in, logged in and is a member of the site. So to do that, I'm going to add some code here inside of my index action. I'm going to check to see if the user, and user is a property that comes on our controller. So we have direct access to the user information. And I'm going to say identity dot is authenticated and this is going to return a true or false value as to whether or not the user has been authenticated so now if they are authenticated then they're good to go ahead and view the page so i'm going to move that up there but if not then we're going to redirect them to our login page Okay, and that's that login page that we created in an earlier video. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So we're going to go to the index action on our member home controller page. And I'm not going to save it, or I'm going to save it, but I'm not going to rebuild it. Okay, I'm going to just let our .NET compiler recompile on the fly. That's one of the great things about .NET Core is that we have this kind of recompiling on the fly. So while that's still going, it might take a moment here, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh. And you can see that we got immediately redirected to the login page. So once again, if I try to go to that member home section, I'm just gonna get redirected right back to the account login. So that's great. What if I go ahead and log in now? So I'll do steve at contoso.com. Password one exclamation and log in. Okay, so let's, it, it logged me in obviously because I got redirected to the home page. So now we'll try member home. And there we go. This is a members only section. So it is knowing, it's able to check using this is authenticated property on identity, which is on our user to check and see whether or not we are actually authenticated. Now, this probably seems a bit bulky, right? I mean, yeah, okay, that's cool. If I'm logged in, if I'm authenticated, then that's great. But now I got to do this for everything, right? If user 
identity is authenticated. Okay, and this is all great and fine for when we want really, really close control in our code. But there's actually another way that's built into ASP.NET Core MVC that allows this to be a much simpler process to add authorization to your application. So I'm actually going to remove all of this stuff. Remove every bit of it. And I'm going to hit Control K, Control D to just format everything to make it nice. And the way that we can do this really, really simply is on the action, I'm going to add an attribute, which is just the authorize attribute. And I do need to bring in the namespace of microsoft.aspnetcore.authorization. And once that's brought in, I'm going to save this. And it's again going to recompile in the background for me. But now if I try, I, I do need to clear out my cookies. So I'm going to go to settings because I'm going to need to effectively log out here. So I'm going to clear out that I've been logged in. And I'm actually going to go and close my browser. And let's go to start without debugging. So I am effectively logged out at this point because I cleared the cookies out of my browser. Now if I go to member home and try to log in, I got a blank page. Hmm. Some of you may get this blank page, some of you may not. Some of you may get some sort of other problem, or if you're lucky, you actually got redirected automatically to the login screen. And I'm gonna show you why all this is happening. So this member home section right now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Fiddler. And we're gonna actually see the communication that goes on between my browser and the website when I try to go to this member home page. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter again. And of course I just get this white screen again. But if I check out Fiddler, we can see what actually happened was it returned a 401 error. So when I tried to go to member home, I just got a 401, which if I just go look at the raw, you can see is unauthorized. So that's actually kind of the right kind of behavior, except this is actually a bug because what originally was supposed to happen was that by default, MVC should be redirecting you to the login screen. And this is a bug for only one version that came out of one particular package that I happen to have installed in this version of the application. So you may run into this problem, you may not. If you're lucky, you automatically got redirected to the login screen. But for those of you who got this blank page, I just kind of want to show you how to fix this. So I'm going to go to my project.json file. And the package that's causing this is this microsoft.aspnetcore.identity entity framework core. If we're, if we're on 1.1.0, that's the version with the bug. But if we switch to 1.1.1, which is currently at the making of this video, is the latest version of the package. And now I'm just going to save this. It's going to have to go out and restore the package. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here and wait for everything to restore. Actually, it looks like I didn't even really need to. So let's go ahead and move on here. So we've got it repackaged. Uh, okay, now if I try to go to member home and just hit refresh, we probably do need to recompile. And now you can see with that one simple little change of the package, we do in fact get redirected to the login screen. So just make sure that you are updated to the latest version of the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Identity.EntityFramework Core. Okay, just make sure that you're updated all the way to that. And now we're being redirected. I'm just going to show you once again. If I try to go to Member Home, it's just going to redirect me right back to the login screen. And now if I go ahead and go and log in, okay, now if I just try to go to member home, there we go. So now I can see the members only section. So just by adding this authorize attribute on my index action, it filtered out so that I had to be logged in in order to view it. 
Now, what about this access granted? If I try to go there, so let's try that. So member home forward slash access granted. Uh, access is granted. Okay, that's great because I'm logged in. Let's try clearing out my browser. So clear that out. And I will show you how to do the sign out, by the way. That is something that we are going to have to do, obviously. So now if I try to go to members only section, you know what? I got to close my browser. Let's try that again. Member home, redirect it to the login, but if I try to do member home, forward slash access granted, we still get access granted. So I'm clearly not logged in, but it's still allowing me to get to this access granted because we didn't put the authorized attribute on it. But one of the cool things that we can do is if we wanna, this whole member home controller, this whole area, I really want it to be locked down for all of the actions, not just this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this authorize attribute and I'm gonna stick it actually at the top of my controller. So member home controller has the authorize attribute. And now both the index and access granted actions will be locked down. So let's try that again. So if I go member home, access granted, hit the enter key here. And of course, it's gonna take a moment for my application to recompile since I made the change to the class. Okay, so I got redirected once again to my login page from the access granted page. So that's great. Now, if I try to go to either member home, I get redirected to the login page. If I try to go to member home, forward slash, oops, wasn't authorized, it was, Access, what do we call it? Access granted, there we go. So both of them just redirect me back to the login page. So that's the behavior that we would want, but what if I have another, what if I have a third action on here? Let's say public I action result, um, allow a non, or say anonymous, anonymous access. Okay, and I'm not gonna make a view or anything here, but I'm gonna return a view so that it doesn't complain about this. Uh, so we're gonna return a view, but I haven't made a view or anything, but I'm gonna try to go to this allow ac uh, uh, anonymous access section. And if I try to go there, I'm gonna get a 404 error. Oh, it's still, uh, <laughs> I made a change, it's gotta recompile. And I actually didn't even save it. I should probably save it. And now let's try hitting refresh. So our anonymous access section, it also redirects to the login page, but what if I wanna make it so that this one action is allowed to have some sort of access by anonymous users and they don't have to be logged in? Well, I can just add another attribute here called allow anonymous. So let's save that this time so that I remember to do that. And now if I try to go once again to member home, anonymous, or what I call it? Anonymous access, yeah, there we go. So if I try to go there again, this time we got an unhandled exception because of course we don't have a view for that anonymous access action, but we got to it, right? We were able to execute this view function, but of course since the view doesn't exist, we ran into an error. So there you guys go. That is how you can go ahead and lock down the various actions on your applications or even entire controllers. You just have to add that authorized attribute. And you can also use the allow anonymous attribute to allow for anonymous access to specific actions where the authorized attribute might be locking down the entire controller. But you could also, of course, just add the authorized attribute on each one of the actions that you wanna lock down. So there you have it. If you guys have any questions about this, uh, feel, please feel free to drop me a comment in the comment section below and I will go ahead and answer it for you. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, bye-bye. I'd like to give special thanks to James McCoy, whose kind and generous donations have made this video possible. If you would also like to contribute, please visit us on patreon.com forward slash programming made easy. Yeah.